John Money was born on July 8, 1921 in New Zealand. He studied philosophy and psychology as a graduate student at Victoria University of Wellington. When he was 26, he moved to the United States to pursue his PhD at the Psychiatric Institute of the University of Pittsburgh. After only a year, he left Pittsburgh to study at the Psychological Clinic in the Department of Social Relations at Harvard University. He received his PhD from Harvard in 1952. Later on, he received degrees from the Institute for the Advanced Study of Human Sexuality and from Hofstra University. After receiving his first doctoral degree from Harvard, he moved to Johns Hopkins University and became the world's first pediatric clinical psychoendocrinologist. In 2002, he established the John Money Fellowship of Scholars of Sexology at the Kinsey Institute of Sexual Health. He studied birth defects of human sex organs, hermaphroditism, and other sexological abnormalities. Accompanied by a colleague, Money treated a paraphilic sex offender with hormonal therapy and sexological counseling. I want to help you improve your sex life. Based on this and his other research regarding paraphilias, Money developed the concept of love maps, which are developmental templates that depict one's idealized lovers and what, as a pair, they do in idealized, romantic, erotic, and sexualized relationships. Love maps. They're as common as faces, bodies, and brains. Each one of us has one. Without it, there would be no falling in love, no mating, and no breeding of the species. Lacking a name, however, the love map has existed in a conceptually unexplored territory of the mind unknown to science and scholarly inquiry. By searching through my file of manuscripts, I found that I first wrote the word love map in 1980. It was in an article titled Pair Bonding and Limerence, published in 1983. Before I wrote that article, I had already begun to talk about love maps in my lectures to students whose textbook was Love and Love Sickness, which the Johns Hopkins University Press had published for me in 1980. Money also established the term gender role, which he later reported as gender identity role. His research was centered on gender status, prenatal hormones, early experiences, puberty hormones, and endocrinology from infancy to adolescence. Now we move away from Maryland toward Winnipeg, Canada. Two identical twin boys were born on August 22, 1965, Brian and Bruce. After seven short months of life, the two boys were diagnosed with phimosis and scheduled for circumcision operations to correct the disorder. For Bruce, what was supposed to be a routine surgery became a complete failure. Equipment malfunctions caused for his entire penis to be burnt beyond repair. Months after the devastating incident, the boys' parents saw Dr. John Money featured on a television show. He spoke about transsexuality and sex change operations. Honey, what's this? Turn up the volume. Is that a man or a woman? He looks well adjusted. Do you think this could help Bruce? Maybe if we just listen, we can find out. Hello, my name is John Money and I'm here to talk about gender reassignment. I have studied birth defects of sexual organs, hermaphroditism, and other sex abnormalities. I will further speak about transsexuality and sex change operations and why they could be helpful for individuals with sex defects. Write down his name, we should contact him. This was the turning point. Bruce was brought to Maryland in order to meet Money, who suggested that he be raised as a girl. Bruce was now Brenda. John Money wanted to prove that biology does not dictate a person's gender and thought that nurture rather than nature plays a larger role in determining a person's gender development. He believed that Bruce could be successfully reared as a female because to him, the way in which an individual is raised is more influential than biological factors such as sex. Sexually neutral, a blank slate. Gender identity is determined by nurture, not nature. Brenda was the perfect case to support his theory, or so he thought. Brenda and Brian's parents decided to tell the twins the truth when they were 13. What? <laughs> Brenda was extremely relieved by the news because throughout her childhood she had felt very unhappy. She never truly felt connected to the female identity. Kids at school were bullying me because I was different. That's what kids do. 
kids always bully somebody who's different. It's the law. One test in particular showed how unhappy Brenda was. Compared with most families, mine's a loser. I think most girls aren't very nice. My feeling about married life is rotten. My mother and I we have nothing in common. To me, the future looks bad. Someday, I will see the sun soon. Although Money denied all claims that the reassignment wasn't working, her brother had noticed that she was not like other girls their age and said, the only difference between my brother Bruce and me is that he had long hair while mine was short. In everything else, we were equal. Brenda immediately stopped estrogen treatments, changed to a male identity, and named herself David. I was told I was a girl. I, I, I didn't like dressing like a girl. I didn't like behaving like a girl. I didn't like acting like a girl. I'm not a professor or anything, but you, you, know, you don't wake up one morning deciding that you're a boy or a girl. You just know. David had surgery in order to construct a new penis, and he was given monetary compensation for the botched circumcision. He later married a woman named Jane, who had three children from a past relationship, fulfilling his desire to be a husband and a father. Unfortunately, 14 years later, Jane asked for a separation. The same day, David shot himself in the head. He was 38 years old. Dr. John Money claimed that he was not responsible for Brenda's lack of feminine identity and that the parents were to blame instead, because the identity change should have occurred soon after the failed surgery. After everything that happened to David, he still did not believe that the theories regarding infantile gender change were wrong. Unfortunately, many children underwent risky surgeries and social gender reassignment as a product of John Money's temporary success. David's story sparked interest and concern, and it was publicized by many sources. Newspapers covered the issue nationwide. An episode of Law & Order SBU was based on the Reimer twins' story. The story of David Reimer was a tragic one, but it supports the contemporary understandings of human nature. Individuals are not blank slates, but are instead a product of both genetic composition and social upbringing.